kind of a full house. You got a full room in there. We're hopping. Place to be. Good morning, anyone watching online. Um, well, let's uh, pray really quick and we'll jump into what the Lord has for us today. Okay. Father God, thank you so much this morning for everyone here at Maranatha Fellowship, for anyone watching online or overseas, God. I thank you, God, for your presence, for your word and your spirit. And I thank you, Lord, that you've promised us to never leave us nor forsake us, so that no matter what we're going through, even in our darkest moments, our weakest moments, you're always there. You're especially there. And so, Father, I thank you today that you're opening up our spiritual eyes and ears to hear and to see what you are doing and to understand your truth because the truth sets us free. So thank you, Lord, that uh, it's not a coincidence that, that anyone here who's here today or watching, Lord, it's not a coincidence, but, but Lord, you appointed them to hear this message. So I thank you for what you're doing um, in this special time in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, well, if you're taking notes, today's sermon is called Eyes Wide Open. And I know this is really hard to believe, but Lee gave me that word a while back. Remember that, Lee? So Lee, I will give credit to the title, as Eyes Wide Open. And, uh, and so um, to give a quick update on the ministry before I jump into the lesson, um, we have an ongoing pledge drive that is it's effective. And of course, it's slow in my eyes, but in the grand scheme of things, it's really working. <laughs> And uh, so the monthly pledge drive, we have people that give on a monthly basis. And um, we actually had it started, I got a donation overseas, so we're starting to get support overseas. And I believe that when they send their resources from overseas, that things are gonna start happening over there too, because they're sowing in here. And you are a part of that, because you are the soil that I'm planted in, and uh, God help you, help me. And, uh, but, uh, so it's exciting. And next Wednesday we do our drawing for a free gift card for, for our pledges. So we do that at the end of every month. And, uh, so that's going well. And then our summer newsletter went out. Thank you, Ket K Box for spearheading that. And Joyce and all of you helpers. There's a lot of you, Elizabeth, Sandra, the whole crew. Um, we mailed out gospel newsletters to over 2,600 people in 15 countries. So, I've always said, and I say this every morning, that the ministry God's given me is a media ministry to reach lives in all 195 nations of the earth. Yeah. And so, I, you know, I'm a nerd. I know that's hard to believe. But if you divide 15, <laughs> shut up, Carrie, <laughs> shut up. And uh, if you divide 15 by 195, you get 7.7%. So we are 7.7% fulfilling. <coughs> Declaration. Hey, that's a good number. So keep going. 7.7%. We're going for 100%, right, Amanda? Yeah. We'll figure it out. And then Lee's in charge of the China division, the Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> you have to some translate. Actually, Melinda is not here, nor is Mary, but they did the last Better View episode, and they prophesied that we'd have translators. So that's cool, huh? That's cool. And Melinda, did y'all know Melinda's Miss World Traveler? I had no idea. She used to be a stewardess, I think, didn't she? She worked for an airline. So she's been all over the place. So anyways, I'll take that anointing. That's great. Mm -hmm. So, and speaking of which, we did film the seventh episode with Melinda as our special guest. And of course, she is awesome. And so I just have to find time to edit and upload it. <laughs> wow, my hands are full. So I'm aiming to get it out in mid-September. So keep that in your prayers. The Better View is still rocking. This will be the seventh episode, and every episode has been so wonderful. Um, so we, we have six episodes. If you haven't caught any of them, you can go online and watch them. They're on my Facebook page and on YouTube. So Better View with McKay. You Google that, it'll pop up. Um, and we are also in the process, and this is, I don't know, you know, God's timing and my timing are different. Um, Miles actually drew up logos for a new filming studio I'm in the middle of setting up called Good Famous Studios. And uh, I've never told this before, but one of the inspirations for the name Good Famous 
So when I was out in Malibu and Hollywood, there's a lady that did some of the PR type stuff for me and what I was wanting to do. And they said, well, you know, any press is good press or you got to take any job you can find. And I just thought as a believer, I thought, I don't know if I agree with that. And so there's good famous and bad famous. You know how people rise to fame by doing bad stuff. And the Lord says, we're not doing that. And so that's the inspiration behind the studio is if you're going to reach people, it's not going to be by drawing attention by throwing fits. It's going to be drawn by the goodness of God. Amen. There's more than one way to get attention. You know what I mean? There's good ways and there's bad ways. So that's kind of a, I've never shared that before. But anyway, so good famous studios and working on getting the legal stuff set up for that and then equipment and the whole team. And lastly, I'm working on the movie script. I actually had a vision during the worship and this stream of papers was coming out and it was all these scripts and lines and characters coming out of my soul, just endless. Mm -hmm. So the last time I had a vision like that, it was for books. So here we go. And uh, I do have my other main actress, a beautiful girl with a wonderful heart, and she will be playing the character of Rose. I'll be Ethan. And she'll be helping me with the script and capturing scenes, and I'll be introducing Rose in the fall newsletter. So keep that in your prayers. All right. All right. So let's jump into the message. Eyes wide open. As you guys know, I've been in this process and looking back, it probably started at the end of February when I got back from California, but God has revived this desire in me after over a decade to, 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 to get married, start a family, soulmate, etc. And so I have, we've had very specific prophecies and revelations, and you guys have all, a lot of you have been part of this process. I've learned some things over these few months, and because it can get emotional when you're dealing with love and desires of the heart. Things can get pretty crazy, right? You have books and movies and magazines based on love and romance and romance gone south and rap song. I mean, every... Go down, you know what I mean? <laughs> so my, I've been through an emotional roller coaster at times, and one of the things I've learned is my value does not come from a loved one, not even a spouse or a soulmate. And that's for each and every one of you. Christy, your value does not come from Clint. Clint's value does not come from you. Now, God has called you to love one another, but ultimately you're going to fail each other. So... Um, I'm learning this, and it was extremely hard at first. My value comes from God and God alone. And that is the truth and the rock we have to stand on. So I, if I seek acceptance and approval from a parent, from a boss, a co-worker, the person I'm in love with, there's going to be times I'm just you're going to be upset, right? They're going to fail you. They are going to fail you. They are not perfect, right? Even with the best of intentions. And, and as a matter of fact, when we do that outside of the scope of faith, we're actually in sin. Did you know that? When we're looking for other people to accept us instead of the Lord, we're actually in sin because we're doubting Him. And, and the applause of other people is nice, but it's not people we're living for. We, we need to get back to the root, guys. We are living for, and our mission is from Him. And it's not from people. Like Daniel, what I said to you, presenting you to the Father, your mission isn't from a wife, it's not from a friend, it's not from me, it's not even from this church. It's from Him. Now, He will use different vehicles. He'll use the church and people to help get you where you're going. But your mission, the source, is from Him who's seated on the throne. That's who we live for. That's who defines who we are. And all other things are subject to that. And anything that contradicts that is from the enemy lines. And we need to rebuke it. Amen? Okay. And, and really, I preached in July that morning, and the night before was really hard on me. And God bless my mother. She had to ship me into shape, you know. But... Uh, that's, it was, and it was fear of rejection of a, my soulmate. And it wasn't from him. But the Lord allowed it because he wanted to make a point. And so uh, it was 
eating, eating, having my little midnight snack like I do sometimes, and I heard the word Romans 14, 3. I thought, oh, that's interesting, because I'm sitting here contemplating all these things, listening to past prophecies. And so I want to read really quick Romans 14, verses 1 through 4. Okay? This is a great scripture for all of us. It's a great scripture to keep in mind when we're dealing with people who act like little wild heathen. <laughs> Y'all don't have anybody around you to act like little wild heathen, do you? You don't ever act like a wild heathen, do you? No? <laughs> so this, I want us to remember this scripture uh, when you're dealing with people that aren't where you're at spiritually, okay? Romans 14 chapter 1, I mean, verse 1. Now, accept the one who is weak in faith, but not for the purpose of passing judgment on their opinions. One person has faith that they may eat all things, but, but the other who is weak eats vegetables only. The one who eats is not to regard with contempt the one who does not eat. And the one who does not eat is not to judge the one who eats, for God has accepted them. God has accepted them. Okay? God accepts us before we're nice and clean, before we're church, before we're even filled with the anointed, but before we're really walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. He accepts us before that ever happens. Jesus accepted them when he got on the cross 2,000 years ago. Now, they may not be walking in it yet, but you've got to remember God sees the end from the beginning, and he's already said yes to them. So we need to say yes to them. It doesn't mean we approve of certain behaviors, but we need to love and accept them as Christ accepted us, okay? Verse four, uh, who are you to judge the servant of another? To their own master they stand or fall, and they will stand for the Lord is able to make them stand. So it's not us. Does it say anywhere in there that you will make sure your neighbor will stand before God? Does it say that anywhere? You're ultimately, they're his servant, not, not yours. You're not in charge is what the scripture is saying. You're not in charge. That's tough. right, Melinda. That's tough, right? <laughs> we were just talking about you. And so what the Lord was showing me is that he receives my soulmate and I as his son and daughter, and that's more than enough. And the point is God accepts her just as she is, just as he accepts me, and he did before I was even where I probably needed to be spiritually. And the same is true for each and every one of us. The same is true for someone who's going to visit in six months who has a very messed up life. God already accepted them, even though they're, all, they're out on the street doing drugs, messing around, you know, doing that whole world. God has already accepted them, and he's going to pull them into the house. You know what I mean? And so the Spirit was showing me um, how to treat things. You know, don't judge that person. You have to ask the Spirit to show you things about them, to pray for them, not to judge them but to help them become who Christ made them to be. You know what I mean? So. so the solution to fear of rejection or things not looking right on the outside, eyes wide open, okay? Eyes wide open. What this means is we go by what the Spirit says, what the Word says, and not by what our carnal eyesight sees. Our carnal eyesight sees that kid throwing a fit. Our carnal eyesight watches the news and sees all these horrible policies that you know are going south. That's what our natural eyes see. But what if we had these glasses? Okay, when, we, when I go to movies, sometimes they have the option for 3D movies. And you put on these little glasses, and all of a sudden, say it's a scene of a shark swimming in the ocean, you put on the glasses, well, you can see that shark. It's not on a flat screen. You can see that sucker swim right past you on your 3D glasses. So what if we had these spiritual glasses? You could just pop them on and boop. You can, and I can see this whole other realm. I like, was it Matrix or whatever? You know what I mean? Well, that's what seeing in the spirit. I can't see you. That's, that's what it's like 
to know things and see things in the spirit. You're seeing a whole nother realm of things. And it, what it will do is it will dictate, it will change your behavior. Because if you know a child is acting out, but you know why they're acting out, instead of just being frustrated and mad with them, you're going to know how to love them into who they're called to be. Right? Eyes wide open. Okay? Because uh, when I began praying for my soulmate, the prophecies were very specific. I was having angelic encounters. And then one day I met her. And it was wild. And uh, I won't give up too many details, but it was not easy. And it's still not easy, but it's getting better. And I can tell you, if I didn't have, if I was not prophetically prepared to meet this person, I would have given up within the first day. But because, yes, I would have. And because the Holy Spirit had had all but wrangled me in about every little thing and then boom it happens I'm still on the pursuit my carnal logic there's no way I would have already cut and ran you know what I mean are there some people that God has called you to deal with that you want to cut and run from no or just me no, not Cheryl though she loves everybody thanks Cheryl special <laughs> so but the goodness is God keeps showing me things that keep me motivated like Tuesday night I was driving home and there's something about that drive I guess people pray a lot on that road because I mean I see this vision like bright this huge screen comes on and there's my soulmate's face her beautiful face and she says and she's talking like on the airwaves, you know, in this vision to TV, to people everywhere. She goes, McKay Marshall, I love you. She says it like two or three times. I'm like, huh. <laughs> and uh, and uh, anyways, and then she turns, she starts saying, yeah, we're getting married. And starts telling her friends and family. Okay, so I have this vision. I'm like, well, that's flattering. And so anyway, so I get closer to home. and I'm about to, Well, then I have the vision again, and it's even more detailed. It's like these glasses on. It's like, and I'm like, okay, she loves me. Wow. Yeah, but I have these revelations and it lights a fire in me that there's no cutting of the string after you see something like that. You know what I mean? And so it, it makes you, and it's the same for you. What God has called you to, your ministry, your workplace, your family, God will send you revelations. And maybe it's not a picture. Maybe it's a Bible verse. Maybe it's a word of encouragement or a prophecy. And my encouragement to you is bring that stuff back because uh, it will motivate you and it will cause it to happen. Mm -hmm. God has called us to put our hands to the plow. So, okay. And, and let me tell you this. When you are in the spirit, there's no lying going on in the spirit realm. Like when I'm prophesying and it's flowing, it flows. And if I'm in the spirit, I can't tell a lie. You know, seriously, I can't. Because the Spirit, there's no lie in, in the Spirit. The spirit never misses, ever. And guess what? This natural world, the devil wants it to miss. The devil wants to bring the counterfeit. The devil wants to bring the lie. I mean, when Jesus was born, literally all hell broke loose. Herod killed, slaughtered kids. Uh, let's go down the list. Jesus had to flee to Egypt. Uh, and it's interesting when... Uh, Clement was talking about <clears throat> the courts of heaven. And the prophet Isaiah obviously was a seer, is a prophet. And I know we've read this, but I want you to hear it. Isaiah 6, verses 1 through 10. In the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, lofty and exalted, with the train of his robe filling the temple. Seraphim, or great angels, stood above him, each having six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, with two he flew. And one called out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the Lord of angelic armies. The whole earth is full of his glory. The foundations of the thresholds trembled at the voice of him who called out, while the temple was filling with smoke. 
Then I said, Woe is me, for I am ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of angelic armies. And then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal in his hand, which he had taken from the altar with tongs. He touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is forgiven. Verse 8, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. He said, Go and tell this people, Keep on listening, but do not perceive. Keep on looking, but do not understand. Rem render the hearts of this people insensitive, their ears dull and their eyes dim. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and return and be healed. He says, see with their eyes and hear with their ears. They weren't getting it. The people of Israel were not on the right page. They weren't listening. They were not understanding. They heard the words, but it wasn't working. You know what I mean? And that's what I'm saying today. We don't need to just go through motions we, and, and receive great messages. It needs to process. We need to understand so that it will transform our lives and the lives of those around us that God has called us to minister to. <clears throat> And Isaiah, he's seeing in this spiritual realm, right? And um, so my question is, what causes our spiritual vision to be dim and our hearts dual and insensitive? Well, obviously, the first answer would be sin. Sin can blind you, right? You can kind of skew things. Sin, sin can make things messy. Um, disbelief, like, yeah, right, laugh it off, huh, whatever. You know, these far-out visions, yeah, right, you know? You know, who Sarah laughed when they told her she's going to be pregnant, the baby. And also, and Clint just talked about this, you know what else can blind us or make us dull and insensitive to both the Word of God and to what the Holy Spirit shows us or says? Logic, quote-unquote, facts, quote-unquote, and science, quote-unquote. And that's what the world is following. The problem with that is the devil is so sly and manipulating facts and and logic that's amiss one little one little piece of leaven can ruin good logic did you know that one little thing can skew stuff you know what i mean and science and all these things that contradict god's word and his spirit and i said let's just add to that fox cnn abc the nightly news the new york times let's just throw them all these media companies in there that can dull your vision real quick too and and it's i, I like to keep up with the news and stuff but i just keep a lot of stuff turned off most of the time because all it does is weighs down my spirit i can't see what's going on you have to get through all the garbage you might as well turn on the the liberal news media and say okay what's the devil talking about today well, seriously, listen to what comes out of their mouth. Listen, we're going we're gonna to truck these women over the state lines and say they overturn Roe v. Wade so they can kill their baby. That's horrible. And, you know, in the natural realm, if you live in the worldly, it's like, well, that's their choice. No, that's murder. You know what I mean? But in the spirit, we know that by the spirit. I know that. I think that's why I get so appalled. I'm like, do you know what you're doing? Like, they, but, and I'm going somewhere with this. They don't know what they're doing or they wouldn't do it. Right? And, and, and before I jump into that, um, I, I want you to see something because there's times, and I deal with this in my own life, how many of you have ever felt like even coming to church, and I know people don't come to church for this reason, or they don't start a ministry because they feel unworthy? Anybody here ever, you know things you've done, or you have doubt, or you've messed up, or whatever, you feel unworthy, yeah? Yep. yeah? Let me tell you, when that seraphim took that coal, do you know Isaiah, who, who wrote an incredible book of prophecy, he felt unworthy, and the Lord, boom, he said, you're clean. Mm -hmm. Same thing for you right now. The Spirit says you're clean. Mm -hmm. He's touching anyone online. The Spirit, he's touching you. He says you're clean. He can make you clean in an instant. He can qualify you in an instant. 
And if that weren't true, my ministry would have been demolished before it ever started. You know what I mean? So I say it's not my ministry. It's the ministry God gave me to steward. <laughs> I'd rather be carried by the wings of angels instead of the wings of McKay. <laughs> Leave us in yeah, no. <laughs> Okay. Matthew chapter 13, 10 through 16. So Jesus, he's, he's quoting Isaiah here. And I'm not going to talk about... Uh, Jesus is explaining the parable of the seeds. Um, Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. You know, he's telling the parable of the four seeds. We've all probably heard it here. Um, the four types of seeds. Matthew 13 verses 10 through 16. And the disciples came and said to Jesus, Jesus, why do you speak to them in parables or, you know, illustrations? Why don't you just, you know, basically, why don't you just bluntly say what you're saying? So Jesus says to them, to you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. For whoever has, to him more shall be given, and he will have an abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has shall be taken away from him. Therefore, I speak to them in parables. Because while seeing, they do not see. They do not see. So their eyes are not wide open, right? And while hearing, they do not hear, nor do they understand. In their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled. We just read this. Which says, you will keep on hearing, but will not understand. You will keep on seeing, but will not perceive. For the heart of this people has become dull. With their ears, they scarcely hear. And they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they would see with their eyes and hear with their ears. And understand with their hearts and return, and I would heal them. Verse 16. But blessed are your eyes. Church, your eyes are blessed because they see. And your ears. Church, your ears are blessed because they hear. Okay? So when your eyes are wide open to what God's doing, you are blessed. You are blessed. And that brings me back when I was talking about what the corporations want to spend millions of dollars to fly women over to, to kill their unborn babies in a different state. Um, and, you, and it's appalling. But I want to say this. You, when you put you and them next to each other, what the world sees and what you see should be very different. What you see, I'll say it again. What the world sees and what you see should be very, very different. What Jesus' disciples saw and what the pious religious leaders saw was very, very different. Same is true today. You, the fact that you're here, see the mysteries of God. They do not. You understand parables. They do not. And we cannot expect people living in darkness to live as though they walk in the light. And that's a great problem to under for me because I get madder than a hornet when, when that's a good analogy, a safe one. And I get, I, get, I get angry because it's frustrating, right? And you go, this is so wrong, you know? But they don't see what you see. They don't walk in the light of Christ. You know what I mean? And so they're not going to walk as though they are in the light. And that's why we need a, desperately need evangelism. We desperately need evangelism. In this country and around the world, we need evangelism now more than ever. And another problem is the church is dealing with this spirit of religion. You know what I mean? The Holy Spirit is being replaced with religion and compromise, and a lot of it is to appease the culture. They got the word, they got the church, then they got this culture around them, and they want to appease the culture. Well, how can I combine this with this, and there is no combination. The book of James talks about that. James says, you adulterers, you can't be friends with God and the world. There's oil and water, they're separate. So that's a big issue now that we're dealing with the church on top of the world, right? And so, 
we got to keep our eyes open. Because I feel right now that the church, we're going to start having fresh vision again. Maybe even old vision, and God's going to add some stuff to it, give us more details. Because what it's going to do, it's going to motivate us. And if you get worn out over this summer, this summer wore me out like a dog chewing on rubber. You know? For real. Do dogs chew rubber? Yeah, they do. Lily by Lily do. They, they chew boarding, they chew anything that Cheryl spent money on. So, <laughs> God bless us. Cheryl, you're the one that found them, okay? You you, you took, brought them into the orphanage. It was you. No, I'm just kidding. Well, no, I'm not. But, uh, focus. Okay. But the vision is what motivates us. So what motivates me right now in dealing with my soulmate when the things and facts and reality look so unsure? And it's starting to move that direction, but it, the first two months, it did not look like it was going the right direction. So what kept me, it was hard to tell with my physical eyes, and I can tell you what motivated me. Two things, love. My passion and my love for the person of my dreams motivates me. And it has since I was this big. You know, that God put that in my heart. And the other thing that motivates me is seeing what I know in the Spirit. When I get that revelation, it sets me on fire. I turn into a warrior. And the same thing is true for you. That, that when the Spirit gives you something, it's to motivate you. To keep fighting. Right? And the Scriptures. And also, I want more of the Lord's favor. And I've said this before, Proverbs 18, 22. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. And so there's a special blessing when a man finds a wife. You know what I mean? The Lord pours out a new anointing. And I'm seeing the birthing pangs of this going on in my life. And I'm not going to break down all my issues that have happened in the last 24 hours. But there's a birthing pain that's happening right now. But I'm seeing this new blessing moving my way because God is in the middle of joining me to my soulmate. And so, you know, it's a little messy in the way I'm right now, but it's going to be good. So, and, 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 and the cards are stacked against me in terms of getting married. You know, it's always been a touchy subject with me. I've, I've divulged a lot of this stuff in previous sermons, in my summer newsletter. But it's like going into the fourth quarter, three touchdowns down. You know what I mean? The facts, the science says, in my age bracket, age 25 to 44, around 70% of people have been married. 70%. That's the facts. So that means I'm a minority. <laughs> so my carnal mind reads the facts, the textbook answers, and says, well, I'm left out. And in my mind, because I'm a perfectionist, and you're either first or you're last, thank you, Mackenzie and Megan, for making me competitive. My thinking is, do you know how it is impossible it is for me to get married? That's impossible, because I'm in the minority, right? So that's my carnal thinking, my logic, right? It's my cave logic. Because otherwise I'd already be married. That's my thinking. Well, what's the deal here? And I haven't dated in over 12 years. And the reason is because I got really, really, really burned by women coming out of college. And after that, I just said, I'm going to build my life, my career. I'm gonna, and I've always been very driven, as you all know, very accomplishment driven. And, and so I just said, forget it. I'm just going to build my life, put this thing, bury it, done. And I just, so for about 12 years, here I am trucking along, you know. And uh, boom, <laughs> boom, <laughs> the Lord started showing me all this stuff in the year 2022. Lots of twos going on this year. The Lord already knew what was going to happen to me this year. And on the Hebrew alphanumeric number two, how many of you know what the word two translates in Hebrew? Household, household, two, 20, 22. Amanda? Amanda knows this. When I stepped, I went to Hollywood, out to Hollywood back in February the, earlier this year. And when I got back, I stepped off that airplane on 2, 22, 22. Huh. 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 5, 2. Daniel's into numbers. Y'all go talk to him about numbers. Y'all hound him. 
They'll smother him and ask him about his numbers. And uh, he, can he can handle it. Uh, so 2, 22, 22. Is that not the spirit and timing saying, household, 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 house of Marshall, McKay Marshall, household, I'm starting McKay's household. Right? And now that all this stuff is manifesting, because I got the prophecies, now it's all happening. Guess what I see all the time? It's 2.22. It's 12.22. It's 2.2. Two. It's the dates. Uh, Daniel's expired deal, don't. Is 2.22. Right, Dan? <laughs> and he's in the numbers. You know, so I see twos. All the, it used to be 111. Not anymore. You know? One's the loneliest number, I guess. And uh, then, earlier this year, I gave a printout to both Christy and Cheryl. And a prophet, I think she's out of Connecticut. She's really good. I can't remember her name. She prophesied. In 2023, she said a lot of the curse of singleness is being broken right now in the church. And a lot of marriages would happen in 2023 and so forth. And so that's just another big, you know what I mean? And so my question is, how many times does God's promise look almost or actually impossible in the natural world? In other words, what do the facts and science say versus what did God say, right? How many times does it look the opposite of what you hear? Nearly every time. Nearly. Usually, God tells you the opposite of what's happening. And you know why he does that? There's one thing that pleases him. It's faith. Hebrews 11. Amen? Without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. We must believe. I'm going to give you some examples. I'm not going to read through all these stories. It's funny, uh, Clint was talking about uh, mm -hmm. Hannah and, and uh, Samuel. But the story of Abraham, he was told he was going to have a baby. Isaac, Isaac, when Isaac was born, Abraham was 100 years old and Sarah was 90. <laughs> Never had a baby. How impossible is that? <laughs> Sarah, you going to have a baby? No. Okay. And, and if you want to read those stories, Genesis 18, 1 through 15 is where you can find that. And then Genesis 21, 1 through 4 is when Isaac was actually born. Let me tell you this, too. It would be way easier if you could just see it and then God tell you, right? That wouldn't take any faith. Like, if you read Genesis 21 and it's Isaac being born, you'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, they had a baby. But if you go back three chapters and you hear God saying, you're 90 years old, you're going to have a baby, it's like, uh... It's easier if you do it backwards. You know what I mean? If you already see the end, it's like watching the end of the movie before the beginning of the movie. Right? That's good. I put that in the script. And then some other examples is the story of Hannah and Samuel. Hannah was barren, and um, then she went to the temple, and uh, the Lord, uh, the I think it was Eli, one of the priests said, Hannah, you this you'll have a you're about to may the Lord grant you your heart's desire. And boom, there was Samuel, and he was dedicated to the temple. That's in 1 Samuel 1. So it looked impossible for Hannah to have a baby. And then I don't know if you remember the story in 2 Kings 7 when the royal officer, there was a royal officer, it was horrible, horrible, horrible time in Israel. They were being sieged. I think there was a cannibalism. I mean, it was terrible. You know, there was really dire straits. And uh Elisha prophesied, by this time tomorrow you'll have food, you'll have bread, and it'll sell for a low price, two shekels or whatever. And, and the royal officer kind of smarted off and said, yeah, blah, 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 blah. And Elisha said, you'll see it, but you're not getting any bread. Sure enough, the next day, the five lepers go out. The enemy who was sieging them had run off and left all their goods. And they get all the bread, all the everything. They plunder the camp. And the royal officer who kind of smarted off he gets trampled to death at the gate. <laughs> but he sees it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't let that. I was going to say, don't let that be you. But I think the Lord's, he's merciful or I'd already been trampled. <laughs> so um, that's 2 Kings 7. And then finally, Zechariah. Y'all remember that? John the Baptist's father. And he kind of questions Gabriel about having John the Baptist, his son. So the angel says, mm, before you put a word curse on this baby, you're mute. Guy couldn't speak. Guy could not speak till John the Baptist was born and named. Amen. The angel would not let him come against the word of God. 
because of, not because he wasn't a good man. I believe he was a righteous man because of his disbelief. Amen. Cynicism. The, in the spirit, there's no cynicism either. We have to get out of our carnal nature. In, in a way, you have to, it's almost like you have to close your natural eyes and open your spiritual eyes and see. So. Okay. God has given us scriptures and his word, but he's also given us prophets and prophetic anointings so we can see in part what is coming. And I said this before, God is prophetically preparing us for the road up ahead. Hang on to what the Spirit is showing you. Hang on to what people are praying and saying to you at this church. Hang on to it because God is preparing you for the trip, the road trip. Because I will say this, had I not had months and even prophecies years ago about my wife and children, very detailed stuff, if I hadn't had all that before a few months ago, I would not, I would have missed it. I would have missed her. <laughs> I would have missed it. I would have. She would have, she would have zipped in and zipped out and that would be it. <laughs> right? I'd be it for real. That would have been that. But thank God my eyes were wide open. Hallelujah. And not only did I not miss it, I got shot. <laughs> and uh, you know what I mean? Same is true for each of you. God may only send it one time. And, right? But I tell you this, if you're walking spirit, he ain't going to let you miss. Because I didn't miss. Woo! He won't let you miss. He won't. So, it's exciting. And, and God sent a flood of, of prophecies and visions and scriptures and signs and wonders. I mean, it hadn't stopped before and after I met my soulmate. Um, and you know what's powerful, and I don't know that I've ever shared this, the, when I met this person, it was actually on Pentecost weekend. And I've told a few of you what's so profound about Pentecost weekend. There's a scripture I quote every morning. I do these storehouse blessings, and one of the scriptures I quote is for the, the Hebrew celebration. There's three main festivals, and it's, I think it's Shavuot, and it's Pentecost. It's when the Holy Spirit came down. And John 15, 26, Jesus says, But when the Helper comes, whom I will send you from the Father, that is the Spirit of truth proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me, and he will testify also. One day I was saying that in the morning, I said every morning, and I, and I heard the word in John 15, 26, it says, When the Helper comes, talking about Pentecost weekend, and then I thought about it, and I thought, When McCade's Helper comes, and it was Pentecost weekend. <laughs> Eyes wide open. Isn't that cool? I need chill bombs. <laughs> so, and one thing I do know by the Spirit is uh, that that we will be, uh, as a couple, entertainers and artists and a force for good in the Hollywood in industry. You know what I mean? And, and and I'm excited. So, and you guys are all involved in this process. So I'm very excited. And um, so here's a question. Why is this dream of mine, it feels like it's taking so long to pass. It's only been a few weeks or, you know, a few months, but it's like a decade to me. And, and here's what the Lord showed me. is the Lord said, McKay, you don't want a spiritual miscarriage. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that, think about what Clint was talking about. He addressed the issue of abortion last week. When a woman conceives and life begins, does she get to wake up the next day and boop, there's a baby? Like sticking a hot pocket in the microwave, boop, and then there's this. It doesn't work like that, does it? I mean, no. There's a process. And the same is true with what I'm dealing with. That baby has to develop in a safe environment for nine months, right? And it, the process can't be rushed. And if it is, if the baby's born early, there's a much higher risk of health problems for that baby, right? And even for the mother. So there can be medical complications. And the same is very true with our prophecies, with our ministries, with this church. If God were to rush what he was doing at Maranatha, 
or, or your business even, even your business or your family member or your spouse, if you were to rush certain things, it would cause complications. And it could even cause a, a, a miscarriage, so to speak. And you don't want that. If there's a, I've heard before, if there's a right time, that means there's a wrong time, right? And that's where faith kicks in. We have to, we have to trust that God's going to show up on time. Oh, and I'm going to Los Angeles in exactly two weeks. And uh, I, I talked to Leah about this, you know, the, when we met. And then we're in our first trimester of this little baby <laughs> in the womb. My second trimester uh, begins to day up on the airplane in two weeks. So that's another God wing. It's like, okay, God, let's, let's, this is going to be a special trip. Um, and I believe it does tie to that other person and things. Um, so I want you to turn to your neighbor really quick, and I want you to say, neighbor, neighbor. God's, process cannot be rushed. God's process cannot be rushed. Now turn to your other neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. God's, process God's process cannot be rushed. Now say to yourself, say, self, self. God's process cannot be rushed. Now y'all scream it at me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that stern teacher voice Melinda has. <laughs> and you know, I wanted to share these three like short prophecies. Lee, Christy, after after things really took off with what I'm talking about, Lee, uh, Christy, you prophesied on June 19th. You said, God is never late. He's always right on time. Remember that? And that was like right in the middle of all this stuff I was going through. Just my head was swirling. And then July 14th, Lee prophesied. She said, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. Remember that? And then another guy, Callan, who was actually there when things happened, uh, he wrote me Thursday, and he said, the Lord is building the house of Marshall. Pretty cool. So, and I write these things down, and the reason it keeps me going, because... Yeah, you know, when there's so much uncertainty, life feels like this. You know, even like, if you ever watch the stock market, what happens when things, when fear goes up in the economy, the market does this. When everything's rosy and Trump's in office, the market does this. <laughs> but whenever crazy people are in charge and they lie and they cheat and they fraud, the market goes, Shh. right? So, oh, I'll get, I'll get hit up for that one, but oh well. Oh, well. that Facebook is shutting me down. How dare you oppose them? Okay. I'm going to share some, a few visions and then I'll wrap up. So I've had some interesting uh, visions uh, over this other person. And, and I, I, was, I saw her and I standing on this rock and we're out in the desert. And I said, I, said, Let's, I want to send the water, send the, the, the gushing water in this vision. And... And there's been some kind of barrier between us emotionally sometimes. And, and I, I want more, you know. And I heard her say to me, no, McKay, I'm playing it safe. She said, let's hide under the cleft of the rock because it, it's going to flood and it's going to destroy things. And um, I, wanted to, I wanted to bring on the water, the rain, and the flood in our relationship. And, and she wanted us to hide under the rock. And, and we did. And sure enough, it was like out in an Arizona desert or something, these huge huge uh, rain started coming down and it was devastating floods and and what the lord showed me is in dealing with this person that she's very careful and cautious and even avoids at times and the reason is because of the wounds the past and pro very protective of loved ones and that's that's what walls are for right protection and so the lord showed me that and if i hadn't if i'm not having these kind of revelations i don't know what to do i have no understanding because when you're dealing with stuff and it's not working, you go, what do, what do I do, God? And, and I want to encourage you, if you feel like you're, okay, this is for you. Do you ever feel like you're hitting walls with your family? I feel like the Lord's going to give you some visions. Amen. And you're going to have understanding so you'll know what to do. Amen. So, and then I had another vision. And, and, and my soulmate was sitting there in this rock out in the pasture or wherever. And she was blindfolded, smiling. But all these snakes just start coming out of the forest trying to attack her. And I'm like this ninja just chopping these snakes and stuff. Well, all of a sudden in this vision, uh, I saw the church, you guys, and you're like circled around us and started just uh, praying. And, and, and boom, all the snakes just 
they were either killed or dead and left. And then I pulled up the blindfold and I proposed to her and she said, yes. <laughs> so that was another vision I had. And then I also, this is the last vision, and I'm, this is a, a blessing and a warning to you guys. Um, one of the deals with me and, and Clint and I have talked is being evenly yoked and how important that is. Because as you well know, I have nights of prophecy. I write Christian books. So it's important we're spiritually on the same page. Doesn't mean we both have to be perfect, but we definitely need to be going the right direction together. We need to be believers and evenly yoked. And so there were a few concerns, and so the Lord has started to deal with that in this womb that I'm in for nine months, if you will. And things are still being sorted out, but I began to see breakthroughs as I intercede every day over this person. And I, I just see like certain ideologies and even beliefs that aren't necessarily in alignment with God's word and that they need to be brought down. And so the Spirit has shown me as I'm seeing things in the natural, that she is a believer, and I see this like blade of grass in her spirit, and and some of you may actually end up ministering. Someone here has ministered to her actually. I saw a blade of grass, blade of grass of pure light growing in her soul that's getting bigger and bigger, and it's the Holy Spirit, and it's pure light. So I see every day the Spirit is growing stronger in her, and I'm beginning to see a little. I'm beginning to see that manifest on a daily basis, and and so. And, and, and Cheryl sent this video about a prophet who knew who his wife was when he met her, or before he met her, and then he met her. And, and, and it's kind of a crazy, if you want that YouTube video, Cheryl, we have it somewhere. It's an incredible testimony because he's a prophet and he's about as wild, he's as wild or wilder than me. And he, he said, but he said, I couldn't tell her that she was to marry me because he said, I'm not manipulative. And the same thing with me and dealing with this person. I'm not going to tell them all these videos because I'm not going to manipulate them, especially into romance and marriage. I'm not a manipulator. This, and that's true for you. God's not going to manipulate you. Right. And, he, and listen, if he wants someone healed, he doesn't need you to go in there and manipulate them. The Holy Spirit, the devil's a manipulator. The Holy Spirit frees. The Holy Spirit brings peace. And, but what I saw is she's going to minister with me and even light me. <laughs> it's kind of scary. Because <laughs> um, she's one flesh with me. And it was so weird two nights ago. I saw us like, we were this one body. Like, what, what do they call this? The, one, the skin is the biggest organ on the body, the epidermis. And it was like we had one skin. It was, it was, it was weird. I was like, we were one flesh. And that was the spiritual revelation is the two shall become one flesh. And so in the spirit, we're one flesh. So guess what that means? The prophet anointing on me is on her because we're one, right? And I actually had a vision a few weeks ago at church. And I don't know if it was just this or not a prophecy. I was sitting here prophesying, doing my thing. And, and I said, so and so, I said, told her, come up here. And so she comes up here, she's starting praying the Spirit, she gets oil on her hands, and all of a sudden she starts doing all this stuff and starts ministering, and she gets wilder than me, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know, and so we're both sitting here ministering on the stage, and so, uh, so that's exciting. <laughs> um, there's going to be two McCades at some point ministering here. Um, so I'm telling you all this to prepare you for what is what I see coming in the spirit. And as you all know, I try to prophesy unfiltered with each of you guys um, because I want you to have your eyes wide open. And it's like Lee says, we don't, we don't add to, we don't take away, we just deliver what the spirit shows us, right? And so, so uh, there's a double portion coming for my ministry Amen. because of her and even more than that. There's some bonuses. I'll tell you about that at some point later on. And I wrote, the Marshall family is a family of prophets because they are under me as a head of house. Thank you, Jesus. All right, well, I'll do a prophetic, prophesy of our church and we'll wrap up. God is opening our spiritual eyes to see and our spiritual ears to hear like never before. As a congregation, we are going to see more detailed and specific things in the spirit. With our 3D glasses. Spiritual glasses. You won't forget these. 
The prophetic anointing is growing stronger. It will be unprecedented in this upcoming season. Our spiritual eyes are wide open. What we see happening in the natural world will not sway, dictate, or change our minds. We are anchored, church. We go by what we know in the Word and in the Spirit. As we stand firm in what God has shown us and what God has said, we are going to see tremendous breakthrough. We are going to see new levels of increase and an expansion of territory like never before. We are going to see anointings released that we haven't seen in a long time or maybe have never seen. There's some new anointings the Lord's stirring up right now. And, and I got this word. As the rain starts coming down next week, the Lord says it's a fresh anointing of something you've never seen before. And it's really not even like a ministry you've seen before. So uh, I just, Lord, I impart those anointings over Maranatha, over this region. We are the people of God and we are a church with eyes wide open. Amen. 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 All right, well, I always like to give the opportunity, especially for anyone watching online or if anyone's in the congregation that hasn't accepted Christ. The first step to coming into a right relationship with God is by accepting Jesus, the Son of God, as your personal Lord and Savior. There's a lot of religions. There's a lot of ideologies and philosophies in the world, and they teach all sorts of things. But there is only one way into heaven, and that is through the blood of Jesus. Jesus is the only way you get to heaven. It's the only way your sin is pardoned. It's the only way to enter into heaven. And, and Because if not, what happens is we die in our sin, and that sin has to be punished. You know? There's heaven and there's hell, and everyone's going one place or the other. And God has given everyone the opportunity. And so I want us to be prepared to share, um, to lead someone to Christ. And if you never accepted Christ, let's just bow our head, close our eyes, and, and, and repeat after me this, this prayer of salvation. All right? Lord Jesus, thank you for coming to die on the cross for my sins. I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. Make you my Lord and Savior. Amen. And that's the first step. When, when a person does that from the heart for the first time, the Bible says their name is enrolled in the book of life in heaven. And I had an incredible vision. Uh, Monday morning I woke up and I was having a hard time and I was up in heaven and Jesus, he was intentionally not saying a word. And he, I saw him flipping through this book and it was like almost like this and it was just full of life. And the pictures were moving and there were names. And all of a sudden he turned to a page and he pointed and it said McKay Levi Marshall and then it had my birth date next to it. And then I, we floated, and we, I was in the heavenly realm with him like Isaiah was, you know what I mean? And I looked down to earth, and it was so peaceful and wonderful up there. I said, Lord, I don't want to go back. And he just looked at me, and, and it's like, your time's not done on the earth, McCade. And so, but it was comforting to know I'm already in that book. And so when someone accepts Christ, when, when you're at the gate, that book, you're in there. So, all right. Well, I'm going to declare a blessing, and we will. Be done. Okay, I believe and declare you are walking with your eyes wide open. Because you are sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit, your spiritual ears are hearing. Because you are reading the Word of God, your spiritual eyes are seeing the truth. Your spiritual eyesight and spiritual hearing is growing stronger than ever before as the anointing of the Holy Spirit continues to increase. The divine spirit of revelation is causing business deals to fall into place. Um, I really feel that. I'm actually dealing with that right now. Business deals to fall into place. Marriages to begin to happen. New dreams and ideas to come forth. And a spiritual revival that fills up our churches. Amen. You are rising higher and going to new levels of victory like never before. With the Lord's help, there's nothing you cannot achieve in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. Love you guys. 